Swim Live, where we chat with change agents and swim deep waters in an ongoing exploration of human potential. I'm your host, Christine Chen. You know, this is the time of year we might reflect how we want to show up in a new year. We want to introduce you today to Gitanjali Hemp. She is a multidisciplinary energy healer. So I want to talk to her a little bit about what are the ways we can release the past and clear a path to craft the future with refreshed energy perspective. Like, what do you want to let go of in 2021 as you move into 2022? We'd love to hear about it. So put it in the chat as we say hello to Gitanjali. Hi. Hello, Christine. How are you? Really good to see you. Thanks for joining us. If you're joining us on Esalen Live, please float any questions into the chat. If what uh, Gitanjali is sharing with us today is very helpful to you, send her a little love, heart emojis, thumbs up emojis, any emoji that feels like it's communicating to Gitanjali your gratitude for what she's going to share today because I know it's going to be good. So thanks for taking the time. It's so funny every single time the new year ends or we approach a new year or we end a new year, we think about reflection and what's going to change. How do I want to be? What kind of change can I invite in? Why do you think it's so important to think about those things at this time? I think that there's these moments in time that are like these portal moments. They're these opportunities for us when we cross a threshold from one kind of chapter in our lives into another. And I think different cultures over time have had different times that they consider these um, restart, reset moments. But when so many people at once all over the world are feeling a newness and a new beginning, I think it's a tremendous opportunity to partner with that current and that energy and have some um, mindfulness and choicefulness in how we want to step forward into a new year. Mm, really well said. And then what kind of energy do we often feel? I mean, we're in a particular time period in our lives, but is it the energy of wistfulness? Is it regret? Is it a desire to transform. What does the new year often bring in terms of an energy that we often see? You know, I think those can all be true. I think there's a lot of different things depending on, on individuals. Um, but what I do see a lot is that people oftentimes have uh, sometimes hope or inspiration, uh, commitment and dedication to something new. Maybe there's a quality of, of possible regretfulness or seeing how they would like to be better in some way. And I think that that can serve a purpose. And I think sometimes we can get in trouble with that as well. Um, pushing ourselves too hard or making commitments that are beyond what we can meet. And so I think that there can be a real tenderness in how we hold these moments and a real listening. We're also in the dark time of year, um, a time where we can really uh, get quiet and hear from the depths of our own being what's really being called forth from us, what we're really, really wanting. And what would you say in terms of dealing with the pandemic? You referred to it just a moment ago, that this is a particular time period that we're all dealing with in this time. Do you think that's shifted the way that people reflect upon approaching a new year a little bit differently than in years past? Yeah, I think definitely. I think that a lot of what I see in, in my clients and, and students and in the world is that a lot of people are getting much clearer on what they truly value. Um, what what holds meaning for them and what doesn't. Um, and so there's a really large shedding, I think, that's happening. And I also see people taking risks that they might not have been willing to in the past. Um, and I think that that leads to tremendous possibilities and, and new beginnings um, at a much deeper level than maybe we have seen in the past at times. Well, Gitanjali, we can see a little bit of love coming through on the chat right now. Thank you for watching Esalen Live. We're talking about healing energies, energy healing, moving into a new year with Gitanjali Hemp, who is a multidisciplinary energy healer. So we thank you for watching and thank you for uh, giving you a really upside down life kind of emoji from Kimberly. Thank you. If you have any questions, please float them into the chat. And then also, I think I would love to hear from you all, and you can tell me if you agree with this, what is it that you're really clear about what you want in 2022, or what would you like to let go of in 2021? Float it into the chat, and maybe we can spark a discussion um, in partnership with you watching here on Esalen Live. I wanted to bring up this photo for all of you. And Gitanjali, can you share with us what's happening here at Esalen? 
Yeah, um, this is actually, we have a two-year training. It's a long-term professional level training where we train practitioners and we also train people to work, perceive, and move with the energy in all types of applications, even, you know, in uh, their relationships and their corporate jobs as entrepreneurs. And so in this picture, we're seeing um, a student working with one of the other students and kind of, um, I don't remember exactly what they were practicing on this day and at this time, but what you don't see is that that view looks out over uh, a sea of trees. Um, it's a really beautiful space and you can really, I can feel her connected to the vastness of the landscape and holding space um, for this other student, friend of hers. You can um, see her hands as well, open, available. There's a lot of power in energy healing within the hands. And this brings us to a mudra that you sent this beautiful picture of this mudra. Could you share what energy this is meant to bring in or is it meant to bring in any energy at all? Yeah, so this particular one, I see mudras as being kind of like antennas. It's like tuning our signal to a particular um, frequency. And so this one, we do a chakra mudra practice as part of our basic kind of energy hygiene um, with the work that we do. And so this one is for the solar plexus. And it can be really focusing, centering, and directive. Um, it can have to be well and clarity of thought and direction. So let's, do you mind if we practice this with you at home? Because it seems like this is kind of the thing we're talking about, about focusing in on how we want to show up and 2022 in this crossover moment. Could you teach us this mudra? Yeah, it's a really, really simple one. So it's kind of prayer hands and then taking them forward and then it's left thumb under right and there's a slight gap in the back and you place this kind of at the solar plexus. So um, above the navel and below the bottom of the ribs, kind of just right in front of you there and allow the shoulders to drop allow the spine to be straight and the root to be soft and open and so at the solar plexus there's a willfulness and and what i'm always bringing to mind when i'm sitting in this place is that there is an effortless upward rising current along the spine while there's also a water falling down of all the tissues around that upward current so there's kind of an effortless uh presence and direction um, go ahead. I was just going to say, you know, oftentimes in, I mean, I'm sure you're aware in yoga, they have a lot of, a lot of this type of way of looking at things. We're always looking at trying to hold the beauty and the benefit of the paradox. So the upward rise and the downward fall, the dynamic tension and the relaxation. Um, and when we find that sweet spot, I find that we can be in a state of suppleness and readiness. So rather than reactivity or collapse, we want to find this kind of um, integration point. And I think that the solar plexus and this mudra can sometimes um, help us find that. Mm -hmm. So how would we practice that particular mudra? And Kimberly loves yoga and Ayurveda. Me too. Let me add that to the broadcast so you can see her beautiful comment right there. Thank you, Kimberly. Uh, this particular mudra, this is one of my favorite practices also. Um, how do we use this every day or for certain purposes? Can you share a little bit more about your perspective on that particular mudra and mudras in general, maybe? You know, um, I would say like all practices, there's a way that there, I think the way that I like to talk about practice is that there's two different forms or aspects of practice in my mind. There's probably, you know, an infinite number, but one of them is where we sit down at a particular time, oftentimes in the morning or in the evening, and we have a dedicated practice time. And I call that kind of going to the well. So we go to the well and we get a, a good amount of water, we get a good amount of stillness, we get a good amount of presence, whatever it is that we're that we're working with and looking for. And then throughout the day, we need to remember to sip from the cup from the water that we got from the well. And so sometimes I think mudras can be that. Um, if I have a practice and I've kind of made a somatic anchoring in my system that when I sit in this way, when my hands go into this position, a certain quality of beingness overcomes my system. I'm kind of cueing my nervous system and my biology and my mind and my psychology to re-enter that state when I touch into that somatic presence again. 
So mudras can be an antenna and they can also be an anchor or a, or a kind of a reminder to the system. Um, and so later in the day, if I go back and I go and hold that mudra and I have the experiential embodied understanding of what that mudra kind of you know elicits in me then when i go back into that mudra stance even you know i can do it in the middle of a, of a zoom call <laughs> I can do it in the middle of my day um then then i can kind of remember that quality of energy and that presence and call upon it again later i love that that you just described energy work is also a little bit multitasking sometimes <laughs> the realism of our lives right uh, I want to bring this up here in terms of refinement, because this crossover moment into a new year is like it's a natural time to reflect. And also when we talk about getting more clear, this is really refining your path. Right. So reflection and refinement kind of go hand in hand um, when we talk about a fresh start. How do we nurture this path of reflection and then converting it, transforming it into refinement, and then allowing us to really go on that path. I love that framing. And um, a lot of the times, a lot of another way that I also talk about it is as integration, right? Mm -hmm. So yeah, reflection is a really important part. Um, in a lot of spiritual practice and spiritual work, one of the first steps and stages is a deconditioning process. And what that means is that there's so much that we kind of get from our culture and from our family of origin and the experiences that we've had that kind of conditions us. And that's perfectly fine and, and good. Um, it's part of who we are and we want to integrate that. And we also want to be very aware that what we're building our lives from, what we're creating from is really aligned with our essence and our true nature. Um, that's when we build a life that we love and mm -hmm. a world that we love and that is in alignment with our values. And so there's this quality of, um, in that refinement process, there's a reflective aspect, and then there's also a discovery process. And I think there's something to be said about um, partnering with an emergent current. And that's what we can really do when we start learning how to be with and listen to the energies. Um, you also do some shadow work within your practice and your offerings. What does that mean? And how hard is it to do that? And maybe my last question on that is, is it necessary? Um, I think it's absolutely necessary for integration. Um, I know shadow work is a, is, a, is a very common way of speaking to it. We call it uh, tending to the dissonant voices. And the reason for that is because really they're always there. So is it hard? Um, I think it's, it's happening regardless. So tending to them, we might have a moment of resistance, but as soon as we learn how to turn towards those voices and those aspects of ourselves, the ones that are dissonant towards what it is we're truly wanting and moving forward in our lives, um, they, they transform without needing to push to change or fight or fix them. Um, as soon as they land in our awareness in a real way, they, they transform. And when they do, they're full of so much life force and so much wisdom. And they help us actually be able to ground and manifest the things that we are wanting to create in our life. So without them, I think our life tends to be more shallow and less complete. So I think I would actually frame it the other way and say it's difficult not to work with them. Mm. Um, and then in terms of this path, it, it definitely can be challenging. It can definitely be rewarding. And so much of our experience at Esalen, we sometimes think about those beautiful baths, right? And the idea that we can revitalize ourselves in this process and potentially as we tail out of this process as well. Why is that part also important? Is that the acknowledgement part? I don't want to say reward, but is that the acknowledgement of being on this journey and being able to replenish yourself because you are working with your own energies here and and that can be a lot it can absolutely be a lot i also you know we work with uh the energies of the land and of place as well and esalen is just such a amazing rich dynamic environment and i would say that the waters there the land there the ocean there all of it adds to nourishment, adds to insight, adds to our perspective and our perceptions. And 
um, will inspire us in ways um, in alignment with with our truest nature. Mm -hmm. So I I think that there's a real richness in in being on land in that way. It's such a magical place. Will you would you be willing to share what you are looking forward to or maybe hoping to let go of in 2021 and what has gotten clear for you in 2022 would you be willing to share that yeah you know i um some of my some of my students will talk about uh really just I can be really dynamic and alive and very, very real in the classroom and in different spaces. And they have been asking me to come out more into the world. And so I am working on that. I'm working on a book. I'm working on writing a lot more and being a lot more present and available in a more worldly way. And so what I find that is being released in that process is places of of hiding, of doubt, um, of question, um, and so that's what I'm releasing the places where I limit myself in different ways. And what I'm moving forward and into is sharing more of myself more fully. Oh, that's so beautiful. And you have some love coming your way from Ruthie. I love you. <laughs> Thank you for bringing your amazing presence to new places and people. We love it. If, if anything that Kitanjali has shared with you today has resonated, please send her a little bit of love right now. Last chance, because we're about to wrap up here. Uh, if you'd also like to work with her in person, she has a workshop coming up at Esalen, December 27th through January 2nd. Emerge in conscious flow, step into the new year with yoga and energy awareness practices. Anything that we should know in signing up for this workshop? It is going to be delicious and magical and restorative, rejuvenative. Um, We will have ceremony and connection. And we're a lot focusing on community too. I think with the pandemic, there's a way that we've been isolated from one another. So Mm. any of that sounds good and nourishing for you. Please join us. Yeah, beautifully said. Thank you so much for joining us on Esalen Live. Last chance to send Kitanjali some hearts. Send her some good energy. She sent you so much good energy today. It's been a pleasure having you on Esalen Live. Thank you so much for making the time. I know you're busy and you have a choice on where to place your energies as a multidisciplinary energy healer. You know this very well. So thanks for sending all your beautiful energy to the people at Esalen and in our community. Everyone have a beautiful day.